Um, getting into today, so today we're going to talk a little bit more about the playing philosophy and uh, the curriculum for 11 v 11. Um, so um, again, we have uh, within the curriculum and the playing philosophy, we have the goal, okay? The goal is for Vail FC teams to play fast attack-minded soccer using purposeful possession to exploit our opponents through overloads. Defensively, our teams work to quickly regain possession by creating pressure pockets while behind the ball, our teams continue to manage uh, a compact shape. Upon winning the ball, our teams apply a high percentage risk-taking mindset to advance the ball quickly, either forward or to the weak side to achieve penetration. Recognition of when to possess must be recycled, uh, when possession must be recycled if the numbers are not in our favor is paramount. So this is really what we're looking to, uh, looking for in each of our teams uh, at the 11 v 11 age groups. And it's what we're working towards in all the other age groups. So we've gone through 4 v 4, 7 v 7 and 99. A lot of that information is going to, is basically what helps us achieve this goal. This is the ends to which we are we are are seeking to have our teams play. And again, if you, you know, as we continue to grow, we can continue to refine this um, more specifically, but this is what we want. So, you know, if you're looking for what a Vail team should look like, refer to this, this page on the spreadsheet as far as this is what we want to see within our teams and within the club as we go forward. Again, reviewing the decision-making process, the perception, the conception, the decision, the execution, and the assessment. Okay, again, I don't want to go too, too, you know, rehash it too, too much because we've done it each week. But um, again, smart soccer players, soccer players comfortable making good choices on the ball. All of that's very, very important in terms of uh, being able to execute in the style that we would like to play. Positional numbers and the movement patterns again. So now we are in the formal uh, 11 v 11 shape. So now, you know, again, all of this, this is relevant. Um, and, and we do look to play, you know, our teams for the most part, uh, we look for our teams to play some variant of a 4-3-3. Um, so, you know, that may be uh, a 4-2-3-1. That may be a, a 4-3-2-1. That may be, um, you know, a, a straight 4-3-3 with one holding midfielder and, and you know, more, more delineated roles in terms of a, a holding midfielder, a box-to-box -box midfielder, and a playmaker. Uh, but we do look for that balance in the 4-3-3. Um, again, we like it for a variety of reasons, but most specifically is it provides us with numbers in the wide spaces specifically where we can overload players, not just with the, the 2 and the 7, for example, or the 3 and the 11, but you can also incorporate your, your, your attacking center midfielders in that and, and really attack, you know, their outside back and maybe a center back in a half space with a 3v2. Um, you can also maybe slide your, your striker across, pin your striker on an outside back and overload things that way. So we, we, there's a lot of flexibility to the shape. There's a lot of flexibility to the system. And that's part of the reason why we enjoy uh, seeing our teams play out of the, the 4-3-3 or, again, some variant of it. Um, and again, we feel that allows it, each of each of our staff, each of you, to be flexible in your uh, vision of how you would see that that come off. And we're not saying you must play this way or that way, um, but we are looking for teams that play through the playing philosophy statement as as outlined above. And again, you know, looking for some variant of that four three three shape. Um, the phases of play and attack. So this is a little bit new. But this is something that that um, I, I've used and worked on in the past. Okay. So we want to talk about, you know, the stages of the field. Okay, so the build-up phase would be the rear portion of the field nearest our goal, um, where we would look to keep things safe. We look to keep things simple. We look to play quickly and look to try to find forward passes early into the midfield where we would look into the preparation phase. Again, still kind of part of the build-up phase, but we're getting closer to midfield now. Um, we're looking to, to unbalance the opponent with changes of the point of attack looking to break lines and find gaps and, and lines through to, to be able to attack the opponent's organization a little bit differently. Okay, the creation phase, again, this is where we get into the attacking half of the field. We're looking to take more risk. We're looking to unlock the other team. We're looking for movements ahead of the ball that are going to be able to give us opportunities to get in behind, get through their team, to create scoring chances. Um, this is really where we would see a lot of those overloads and those movements off the ball that we're looking to create. And then finally, the finishing phase, and that's the portion of the field closest to the attacking goal. When we get into the finishing phase, everything should be working towards a cross or a shot, some form of an attack at the goal in order to create a chance to score. Okay, 
When we look at defensively, we have the same in reverse. Okay, so now we have the pressing phase. Again, usually that's in the opposing team's finishing phase. So uh, the first phase of defending, uh, usually the, the final third to final quarter of the field. Can you get pressure on the ball, deny forward progress, potentially win it back in a counterattacking situation where you're nearest the opponent's goal? Okay, one thing I'll say before I go too, too much further in is the defensive phases of play are a little bit more flexible. It's not quite so strict in terms of the lines on the field and where they exist. Um, but from a, from a visual perspective, it makes sense to think of it in, that, in these terms. Uh, the confrontation phase. So again, where is our line of confrontation going to be? Um, are we going to, you know, are we going to apply pressure on the ball? How are we going to apply pressure on the ball? Um, are we organized behind the ball? Can we keep a balanced shape uh, to manage, you know, the opponent's attacking pattern? Can we look to limit their options forward and force them to go backwards or sideways? And then the reorganization or recovery phase. Again, the areas, these are really just in front and behind our midfield block. The assumption here is that the opponent has made it through our organization to some level. And so now the players who've been bypassed are looking to get back into the team's pattern and reorganize so that we can reset our defensive shape and reset our defensive pattern. Um, this phase really is, is starting to become, the, the defending needs to become more urgent in terms of application of pressure, in terms of really forcing the ball sideways um, and to the outside as opposed to the middle. Um, and this is the phase where we really want to look to say, okay, uh, can we stop them here? Uh, this is a great place to win the ball because it affords them a lot of space in front of you where you can counter. And then the protection phase. So from here, this is our line from our line of restraint. Really, the line of restraint is the last line in which uh, we don't want our back line to retreat. We want to make sure that we're engaging the ball at that point. Um, and then, you know, the ball must be confronted and we must deny forward progress. We need to protect the goal at all costs. So this is where we're looking to and tackle intelligently in and around the penalty box, um, deny service, block shots, and for the goalkeeper, of course, making saves. Into the principles of play. So we talk um, about the attacking principles of play. And, and again, the first thing that I'll say before I get into these specifically is that yeah. much of the coaching that is done through the technical parts of the coaching, the, 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 the philosophical base has been done in the 77 and 99 units. So if I'm not alluding to anything in here, please refer back to those two presentations and those two slides, the slideshows so that you have that information and can kind of fill in some of the gaps and fill in some of the blanks there to get us to this point. And um, at this point in our, in our development, in our maturity as a club, we don't have uh, teams that have been together for, you know, from U8 all the way through the entire cycle. We, we're three years in. So it's going to be very common, at least for these next few seasons, for us to be filling in from below with the information. But we're working towards these goals and we're working towards these principles uh, within our 11 v 11 teams. So um, big keys for us when we attack is to play on the flanks and to, to try to achieve the baseline, to try to work and attack the end line, okay? It's where the overloads typically occur, uh, in the wide spaces especially. We're looking to, to create movements um, off of the ball that are going to uh, unbalance an outside back or overload an outside back or a center back, attack the half spaces to get the ball in behind that outside back, look for service. And then off the ball and away from the ball, we're looking to train the movements of the midfielder, the weak side midfielder, the strikers to attack the near post, the far post, and the second six yard box. Okay. Um, combination play, looking to, to work on the combinations of, you know, basic and simple give and goes, but third, also third man runs, um, sending players into spaces in between uh, defenders to, to try and, and, again, create those overloads centrally, but also look to uh, create the movement off the ball and ahead of the ball to get in behind the opposing team. Um, and again, this requires the refinement of the technique, the timing, and the movements of each pattern. From a management of space perspective, we're looking for rotations and interchanges across the shape. So rotations, um, what I think of as a rotation, I think of a rotation as any movement of a player leaving their home position on the field to move into a new space or an open space in an attacking movement. So an outside back who is overlapping uh, an outside midfielder or a winger, for example, to get in. That's an example of a rotation out of position, 
okay? An interchange would be two or more players changing positions. So if the center forward and the attacking center midfielder swap, the center forward drops in to check in and one of the midfielders makes the run in behind to replace them. That would be what I would consider an interchange across our shape to, um, again, to create a mismatch uh, defensively for the opponent, to, to change the marking assignments, to create more favor to us, and to cause problems for the other team with our movement, who picks up the player as they leave, who picks up the player as they come into the space. Um, and again, what holes open up if a center back follows that, mid, that center forward, for example, is there a space in behind for a moment that we can play somebody into? Um, and then we also want to talk about the management and the expansion and contraction of our team shape as we win and lose possession. I often talk about to the kids about how the game breathes and how when we have the ball, that's an inhale or a taking in of breath. And so, you know, our lungs expand, our chest expands, everything gets larger, right? And that's what has to happen with our team. Just like when you take a breath, it happens quickly that everything gets much bigger. Well, that's what has to happen from our team shape. Um, and then when we lose the ball, that is almost like an exhale. And again, everything gets smaller, gets tighter, gets more compact. And um, we have to get ourselves into, into a better organization quickly. So those are the things that we talk about. And again, at this age, um, you know, we've introduced the phases now. So re reinforcing the phases of play, reinforcing the positional numbers and the coaching verbiage as well. So um, the coaching verbiage we're going to cover in another slide. Uh, defensive principles of play. So again, the team's pressing and then their group defending. So from a pressing perspective, how are we setting traps? How are we defending uh, versus different styles of play? If we're playing teams that are building out and we should be able to recognize that pretty quickly in a game, how are we going to set about to, to, to trap them to win the ball? Where are we looking to win the ball? And how do we, how do we counter from there? Um, and then when we play teams that are a little bit more direct, again, that's the other side of it. How do we deal with, how do we deal with uh, those games to um, what what system are we going to use to defend them and deny them? Are we going to press them even higher and try to deny that launch and that that first ball in behind us? Or are we going to sit a little deeper, not worry about the press so much, but work on getting numbers around where it's going to land and winning the second ball in order to ensure that we collect the ball and can restart our offensive pattern? And then again, what uh, group defending? So what's our line of confrontation? Where are we engaging the opponent and how are we um, and how are we doing so? Are we forcing the ball centrally because we're engaging them high up, high up the field and we want to force them into our midfield for numbers? Or are we forcing them wide because we're engaging in our own half? Um, and then what's our line of restraint? So where is that line in the sand that we're going to say, you know what? All right, we, we, we can't let you any further forward. We're going to start looking at making sure that we tackle, making sure that we have, you know, uh, even if we don't have cover, we have to engage the ball and make sure that we tackle, make sure that we cause them problems. Uh, in order to uh, work to protect the goal as vigorously as possible. And then within the system, you know, 11 v 11 sessions should also include some version, version of the following. So positional play, training a player in the player roles of their position on the field, teaching a center back to be a center back or a striker to be a striker uh, and vice versa. Um, functional play, training the blocks of the team in their collective group role, training the back four to move as a unit, training them to to recognize the dangers of, of a ball, a driven ball in behind. How do they step? How do they drop? How do they shift from left to right? Um, advanced transitional play. So we're working on pressing and counter pressing, not just the act of, okay, we're going to press the ball, but now adding to it that next step of, okay, we're going to press the ball. And then when we win it, this is what we're going to do afterwards. Or we're going to be looking at, okay, when we lose the ball in an attacking situation, this is how we're going to counter press right away uh, to deny the opponent the chance to counter attack us. 